Hello everyone, welcome back to Reddit Now. I'm your host, Peter, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. Today's post is very entertaining. Neighbors ran over our fence. Dad installed concrete fence that wrecked eight of their cars. I saw your crazy neighbor stories, and now I bring you my father's that stuck in my memory. English is not my first language, and I hope I didn't make many spelling mistakes. Too long, didn't read at the bottom. We live in a small private neighborhood. The neighbors are related to us, more or less, distant relatives. Everybody here is a complete nut job. They were constantly arguing over decades before me or my brother were even born. Our property line is kind of like a square, and it is surrounded by road from two sides. Keep in mind that on one part of our road, we let our neighbors use one square meter of our land so that they can use the road more safely and not damage our property. This is crucial information. The road is made of gravel. The neighbors want my parents and only my parents to pay for the entire cost of laying an asphalt road. My dad and my mother are constantly fixing potholes for 90% of the road. So naturally, our neighbors thought that they will pay for the asphalt road. Classic r slash choosing beggars. Fast forward 20 years, the road remains gravelish. No one wanted to pay for the asphalt road. One day, my neighbors order a massive truck filled with tons of wood. The truck driver runs over our fence. Nobody wanted to pay for the damage. Our fence is made of multiple bushes, trees, and a little bit of metal fence too. I'll put a picture up for you now. These plants were now completely destroyed and a part of metal fence completely bent. We had to replant these plants and place a new metal fence. My father told me that this was not the first time this had happened, but actually the third. I couldn't believe it when I heard this. So this is where the revenge begins. My father is a police officer in the department where they mostly handle frauds, drug busts, etc. He knows the law well. He dug up the property line marker and placed plastic barrels filled with rocks on our property. In the next six hours, three of our neighbors came knocking on the door because they hit the plastic barrels filled with rocks. They were angry and wanted to call the cops, but they never did because everyone knew that little part of land was still in our property. One neighbor in particular threatened my dad that he would throw a ducking pickaxe at my father's back. Over the period of one year, these neighbors hit the barrels so much with their cars that the barrels are now worthless. My dad was furious and he changed his petty revenge into a pro revenge. He cut some wood and used it as a mold. He bought cement, sand and metal poles. One peaceful afternoon, my father and I cemented that whole part of the land and placed some lovely flowers on top. So when they hit the concrete, they could smell our flowers of victory slash defeat. As we expected, five neighbors in total wrecked their cars on the new fence and nobody came knocking on the door. Too long and didn't read. Neighbors ran over our fence. Did not want to pay. Dad installed a better fence that wrecked their cars. You all wanted to see the wall. I told my dad I posted his story on the internet, and he was a little scared at first, but then I told him you all supported him. He was then more proud of his plan. I asked if we still had any video of the wall or crashes. We looked over his computer, then my computer. Nothing. So I went outside and took a picture with my phone. It was really dark. Here's the picture. Keep in mind, I will take another picture in the morning when there is more light outside. I promise. The wall at daylight? The wall at night. Sketch of the property line. And a special picture for some of you from r slash legal advice that wanted MS Paint stuff. Okay, just because that one was so short yet so good, I've chosen another one for today's video. This one is called Nathan versus the IRS. I can't believe it took me so long to think of posting this. You guys are in for an epic one here. First, you have to appreciate the kind of guy Nathan is. Brilliant engineer slash crazy person. Because Nathan likes rules and Nathan doesn't give up when he knows how things should work. I like to get him to tell this story whenever we're together because he doesn't even see why it's funny. It's just how he deals with all problems. Nathan was like if you saw Sisyphus and thought maybe I should try and stop him. But then one day the boulder was on top of the hill and you go and ask Sisyphus how he did it and he replied it was simple, I just kept pushing it forever and ever, and eventually, the mountain gave up. A real grade 19 bureaucrat. He just works systems through problems no matter how daunting they should seem. 
Until one day, when Nathan's unstoppable force met an immovable object. I came into work and saw checks and envelopes spread all over his desk, and Nathan was filling them out with the kind of grin Steve Buscemi might have crossing names off a list with a tube of lipstick. I ask him about it, and he calmly starts explaining that he's having trouble with the IRS. I probe a little deeper since that in no way explains more than one check or envelope, and he starts telling me about how last year during tax season he was in China for work. So, he started filling his taxes out early while at his parents' house. He owed a little bit, but left before he could mail it in. But, he remembered while in China and, broke through the firewall in order to, paid it online. But then, his parents, thinking he forgot, wrote a check for him and mailed it his taxes too. So now, his taxes would be paid twice. So, they said don't worry about it, we'll cancel the check. Well, it turns out that the New York State IRS has a cancelled check fee of something like $40, and they sent Nathan a bill and penalty for the $40. That was it. That was the whole story. A $40 fee. Nathan, why do you have 20 checks on your desk? Oh, well, after I explained to them what was wrong with the fee, they didn't get it. So, Nathan spent the next four weeks escalating the issue to the point that he got a case officer, a real, live human agent on the phone with a case number. Nathan started by asking for the real agent to spell his name, and politely to demonstrate that he was where he said he was by asking how the weather was and how the drive-in had been that day. He then asked for the agent's manager, got their name, and exchanged some pleasantries. He explained that his parents wrote the check, but that he was the one being charged the fee. The agent explained that this was a policy of the IRS. All cancelled checks will result in a $40 fee. The agent and Nathan went in rigorously compliant circles for hours exploring the rules. Nathan then calmly confirmed that Number 1. It is a policy of the IRS to allow anyone to write a check on the behalf of anyone else. Yes sir, that is fine. You just need to indicate the name and zip code of the account. Number 2. It is a policy of the IRS to charge a $40 cancellation fee to the person whose account is indicated on the check. Yes, sir, that is a policy in New York State. This means that, and I swear to God, he actually asked the agent this hypothetical on the phone. I, Nathan, could write a $10 check and indicate it's for you, Mr. Agent at 1234567, Schneckateddy, New York, and cancel it, resulting in a $40 fee for you, with absolutely no penalty or recourse to me? The equally compliant and rule-minded agent replied, Yes, sir, I guess you could. So, that's what Nathan did. And that's what he was doing with 20 checks on his desk and what he meant by IRS trouble. He was following through, sending checks to the IRS addressed to pay the taxes of the agent and the agent's manager, so that Nathan could cancel them, causing the agent and his manager to owe the IRS a fee for each cancelled check. He was exploiting the same flaw in the system in which he was caught to essentially extort the IRS agents. I laughed about this for weeks after, and then, three or so weeks later, I'll be damned if he didn't receive a letter from the IRS. Sir, we understand the point you've made. Please consider your fee waived, and I hope we can put this behind us. Too long it didn't read. My co-worker got the IRS to reverse a fee because he found a way to use a loophole to force the IRS agent to have to pay the fee too. Edit. Okay, this is big enough to make some corrections. So, I texted Nathan on his wedding weekend in China, since it's blowing up and he had some corrections. Number 1. Technically, it's not the federal IRS. It's the New York State Department of Taxation and Finance. Number 2. Apparently, it wasn't a written letter he got back. It was a phone call truce from the agents. Number three, it was only a handful of checks he sent. Number four, the fee was for $50 with late fees, lol. I nominate this for the Pro Revenge Hall of Fame. Seconded, anything that gives some sort of hit to the IRS has my wholehearted support. Hey guys, thanks so much for watching all the way to the end of this Reddit Now video. If you enjoyed the video, which you obviously did, please consider hitting the like button below. If, on the other hand, you hated the video and watched this far for no reason at all, hit the dislike button. If you enjoy this style of content and look forward to more, then hit subscribe or one of the recommended videos on the screen right now.
Lastly, if you have any revenge stories of your own, let me know down in the comments and like the ones you enjoy the most so I can see them. Thanks again for watching all the way to the end of the video. This has been your host Peter from Reddit Now and I'll see you guys tomorrow. See ya!